Hey guys, Adam with Fanic here. Uh, we're going to talk today about joint motion versus linear motion on your robot. Uh, when to use one versus the other, uh, how it helps optimize cycle time, uh, cycle path, and uh, even the, the general health and longevity of your robot um, and how that all ties to how well you discern your motion setting. So to do that, um, I want to do a lot with a visual aid. Uh, so let's start with a program. I'm going to name it fun. Remember, if you are not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And let's just teach us uh, some basic points. Maybe let's just do a little box here or some some square. I'm going to teach the robot to follow a rectangular path by coming in here, teaching a point. And you can see that FANUC has a default, uh, four different ways to move that robot to the point that I'm teaching. Uh, the first two you can see are J for joint, and the second two are L for linear. And then each of them has an option, either a fine or a CNT. This means continuous. In general, what we're saying between fine and continuous is if I teach a point as continuous, that means I want the robot to pass through that point. We're just, we're, we're going somewhere. We've picked up a part and we got to get it to the other end of the cell. Move continuous. Uh, fine means I'm going to stop somewhere and do work. Maybe I'm picking up a part. I want to move fine to that part and then close my gripper or open my gripper, etc. Um, where we get that terminology, why are we calling fine uh, a fine? Why are we calling it that? Well, watch this little speed, you know, the feed forward rate here as I start slowing it down. Uh, and some of you may have noticed this. As you're jogging your robot to teach points and you go slower and slower and slower to really get that robot into position, you can actually get to this part called fine. And what that is, is every time you click the key, the robot will move uh, one increment in that direction. So if I tell this robot to move fine, X plus, did you see it move? It's almost, it's almost imperceivably you know, small. But every time I click it, that robot inches fine forward. In fact, I can go even more and do very fine. Uh, so this is how you can really dial in your positions and really get that robot where you want. That's the same terminology we're using for the termination type is I want to move the robot linearly in a straight line very quickly in this case. And then I want to stop there. I want to get to that point and stop. So let's teach a program with all linear fines and uh, see what that looks like. I'm going to move my robot here, teach linear fine, move it down here, teach linear fine. I'm not very good at right angles, am I? Teach linear fine. And it doesn't really matter if I'm not making a perfect square. I just I want to prove a, a couple other points here. Um, you can see that I just taught a P5, which is the same as P4, but I can go in here and change it to a one. Boop, and now I've closed the box. So now, so now my program is P1, two, three, four, one. And that's the sequence we have. So right now, uh, we would expect that the robot moves straight and then pauses at each, pauses momentarily at each line. Let's uh, verify that and see how it runs. One, two, three, four, one. Super. So if you look, um, and by the way, uh, I am gathering my TCP trace, my tool center point trace. I'm doing that by opening my run panel and checking these boxes for collecting trace. Uh, if that's deselected, then I won't see where the robot went. Uh, that's how you can hide and, and unhide that. Bonus feature for you. So here I am. Uh, <laughs> Not much of a rectangle guy, but you can see that, that, that the robot is taking a straight line and getting to its points. Wonderful. 
But you also see that this robot is very irky jerky. When you have a fine instruction, there is a very clear deceleration to the point and then an acceleration out of the point, then a deceleration to a point and an acceleration back out. And if you think about what that's doing to the robot, all of these axes are working together to start and stop and, and maintain this path. And they're trying to go 2,000 millimeters per second with stopping in between. It's kind of be like putting the accelerator of your car right to the floor, mashing the throttle just to go to the next stop sign. Um, it's very hard with a lot of wear and tear. Uh, the servos get hot, you know, they back feed, you know, the, uh, you know, regen circuit, but they back feed the electricity. The reducers and gearboxes have a lot of strain. And in general, your cycle time stinks. Your efficiency stinks. Um, if I walk into a plant and I see a robot running like this, and I see it all irky jerky like that, I know that I've got a novice programmer on my hands and, and that we need to sit down and, and have a talk. Um, so how do you start improving that? And when and why would you improve that, right? First thing I want to do is change these from being fine to being continuous, CNT. So here we go. CNT. I'm going to go through and just turn them all to CNTs real quick. Wonderful. Okay. CNT, you see, has a number associated with it. This is a scalar number. It's not really a hard and fast measurement, but it is a scalar. Anything from a 0 up to a 100, and any number in between that you like. Pick your favorite number. Um, and... Uh, what these numbers do is the larger the number, the more blending the robot will do of those uh, path segments. Uh, and so if I were to rephrase this, um, the robot looks ahead. So when this robot is moving from position one to position two while it's executing that line, it's already thinking ahead. It's reading ahead and says, hey, after I get to two, he wants me to go to three and he wants me to blend that. I'm going to blend my motion path between two and three. Same with going three to four. Same with going four back to one. And what the robot will start doing is the larger the number, the earlier the blend begins to occur. So let's start with a respectable number. I really like CNT 25s for robot motion, and you'll see why. Execute. Look what this robot just did. It never actually achieved P2. It never actually achieved P3. Never actually achieved P4. But in each instance, what you can see it did is it, said, it saw that we were going to start heading this direction. I gave it a value that said, hey, you have my permission to start blending these corners. And it started smoothing the robot path. Now, obviously, if I was doing a critical assembly or a critical dispense or a critical deburr application, that is not going to be my friend. But if I'm moving through space, I've picked up a part and I need to take that part somewhere. This is going to start helping your cycle time. It's going to start uh, you know, helping the robot run more efficiently, and it's just going to start looking better. The robot's going to look less robot -y. It's going to just blend it. Let's take this to a, a higher degree. Let's blend earlier. Perfect. Here we go. And let's execute that. Look what happens. So now we're starting to get into a situation where we have a very noticeable deviation from our optimal path, right? We, we, we taught two points in a straight line and we're getting way away from it. We're, we're, even the amount of time that we spend heading toward the next point has been reduced. Um, so another problem that I start seeing with inexperienced programmers is this. They just start overshooting. They get overzealous with the CNT or they use the robot defaults, which uh, like I showed you earlier, if you hit point, 
there's a default 100, which is probably the worst. Um, but if you start writing your program at a CNT 100, look what we're going to get. Whoa, right? That, uh, that red path does not look like a rectangle at all anymore, right? So use these sparingly. Uh, when you're going to use a CNT 100, it's typically you need to get somewhere very quickly through space with a, a, a reckless abandon of what you're doing. There's nothing you're going to hit. There's nothing in the way. We just want to move smooth and fast. Let's shift gears and change these from being linears to being um, joints. And, uh, and you might be surprised at what we see next. So first, let's go back to what all our novice programmers do. They have everything as a find, and they have everything as a joint. It's not their fault. No one ever told them. No one told them better, so this is what they get. All right, so I'm about to hit play. What are your predictions? All right, we're going to do joint find. You saw what linear find was. What's a joint find going to do? What's going to be different? Think about that before you even move on. A little, little exercise here. Here we go. Three, two, one. Is that what you thought would happen? Look what the robot has actually done in this case. Two of the line segments aren't even on the table anymore. You can see that the back segment goes up and the front segment goes up. These ones at least stay on the table, but they're bowed way out. Adam, why is it doing that? Why is the robot going up and out and around? I mean, it's still getting to our point, right? I have a fine termination, so it's going where it should go. But it's going to hit stuff along the way. This is ugly. It's doing that because the kinetic algorithm of a joint move within FANUC's motion algorithm is all joints start and stop at the same time. So think of this. You have six different joints that all need to turn on, ramp up to 100%, and then ramp down to 0% because I'm fine. And they all need to start and stop together. Well, that's not going to be a straight line. You get a straight line by limiting some of the joints and coordinating them and working together. Some are fast, some are slow. They need to work together to get that linear path. So when I do a joint path, you end up with this mess, which is almost never useful. So if you're going to be doing some work that requires you to go down inside a box or straight inside a machine, do not use joint moves to go into a machine. You're, you're, you're guaranteed to not approach, you know, if you're, let's say you're loading a part into a chuck, you are not getting into that chuck cleanly or out cleanly. You're going to hit stuff. You need a linear. Well, now let's, let's have some fun. Let's have a little bit more fun, right? You're not having, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Let's go to the nth degree here, guys. We are going to do joint with continuous 100. And again, I want you mentally to think about what is going to happen when we have joint, which you know the robot already takes weird arcs, and I want reckless disregard for getting anywhere near my top positions. You ready? Let's do this. <laughs> uh, is that what you thought was going to happen? Uh, if you were a new user with FANUC and you just taught a box and you taught it with joint CNT 100s and you taught a box and you hit go on that robot and you ended up with this path, uh, what would you think of our robots? <laughs> so uh, it's not the robot. It's, it's the guy driving the wheel. Um, you see that the robot started taking that arc that we saw earlier, but with disregard for P2, because it's a CNT 100, then it looked ahead and said, oh, my user doesn't care about P3 either, so I'm going to go this way. Oh, shoot, he doesn't care about P4 either. I guess I just got to go back to P1. Uh, and it makes it back and has this absolutely disgusting, borderline useless path. I don't know what you could ever do with that. Um, so don't do it. Now, before we wrap up, 
typically at this point is when I get users saying, Adam, you've convinced me. I will never use a joint move ever again. I will do everything with linears. Oh yeah, you wanna bet? Let's say that we're in a situation where we have all these are linear, okay? Because linear at least, at least gives you a, a good path, right? And it gets you where you wanna go and you're a good programmer, so you use a low to mid-range CNT value to make the robot smooth and fast and happy with, without anything bad, right? So, so you, you have a nice program like this. You say, oh, I got a great program, and I'm never going to use a joint move ever again. And after I draw a box on this table, I'm going to come over to this table, uh, and I'm going to do everything linear. Are you now? Look what that robot would have to do. You draw your box, and now you're telling it to go straight to that table. Can't happen. That robot cannot go through itself with a linear command. In fact, the robot is so smart, uh, it won't even try. If you wrote this code, said, hey, give me your box, and then go to that table, linear, look, at the robot won't even try. Here's my box. And I've got a nice big fault. Look at this fault. I've got a motion 17 fault. I, mean, I cannot go there. So the robot is telling us, says, hey, you are telling me to go somewhere and do something that I cannot do. Now, typically at this point, I end up seeing users build in all these extra points. They'll, they'll have the robot uh, move linear out here. And then they'll have it move linear over here. Uh, and then they'll move another linear here, another linear here. And eventually they'll be able to get to that table. And they'll be teach, 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 teach. And they'll have all these linear moves. And, and maybe they think they know what they're, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do good. I'm going to do linears with CNT 100s and, and smooth it out and get it over there. They'll have this big fat code to go from this table to that table. When in reality, all you needed to do to go from that table to that table, make it a joint. The robot's smart enough to do the rest. Watch what this program does now. Run. We'll make our box first, and then we'll go to the other table. Look at that. So when it was a linear, it was a fault. It wasn't going to happen. And if you stayed thinking linear, you were going to have to chop, 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 and do all these line segments to, to work your way around. But if you just tell it, hey, joint, get me over there, then the robot says, hey, I can get over there just by turning J1. And I can just swing right back on over and get the job done. Look at this. All other joints just freeze up at that point. And it just swings over. So there is a time and a place for your joint moves. Uh, if you know that you um, uh, are going to pick a part and you need to you know, invert the wrist or something, call a joint move, flip your wrist. Or if you need to spin the base, go from one to the other. Um, you know, do you need to flip the, the, the top around? You know, there's, there's a lot of times um, you can flip your, your tooling. Um, if, you got, if you're picking up a box and you're palletizing and you want to rotate that box 90 degrees, do a joint. Um, there's a time and a place for both. And then there's fine tuning of both by using your CNT and your fines accordingly. You guys, I hope this helps you make super smooth and sexy robot programs. Um, I hope it helps you with your cycle times and makes everybody happy. And as you move forward, uh, just experiment with it, play with it, and uh, as always, have fun coding.